Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostfront. I wanted to start by making some very basic tutorials for any new players or anybody who needed a little refresher on Man of War Assault Squad, Call to Arms, or who is getting into this game, Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostfront, for the very first time. Here we are in the units library, and again, remember, the developers have sent me and other content creators early access to things in the game that you might not have access to in the beta. So we're taking a look at a uh, creators-only version where we're going to jump into multiplayer today and do some very basic tutorials on how to utilize infantry, things like throwing grenades, building defenses, transporting uh, Tr soldiers and troops around the battlefield and also how to take things from one soldier uh, from one to another and uh, making defenses and using defenses and uh, all sorts of different things. We've done a little bit of this before on the channel in terms of making those defenses and so those videos are up on the channel but we haven't really taken a look at uh, the very basics of the game. Things like how to call out the infantry and what different types are. Now we won't have time today to go over every single infantry unit in the game for both the Soviets and the uh, uh, of course, the Germans, but we will at least have a little bit of time to instruct others and to really show you a little bit more about how detailed the game is and how it differs from Call to Arms and also Men of War Assault Squad, which you may have played in the past. So if you haven't already, make sure you click, tap, and blow up the subscribe button as we rock it towards 1 million subscribers. And of course, make sure you go ahead and click that like button too so other people can most importantly find this game and get interested in it. And then of course, for anybody who is looking to learn. Now please, if you are a skilled player in Call to Arms or Men of War, or if you've watched a lot of videos, give some great detailed tips down below. I am definitely going to miss some things and we will not have time for everything here today. So give some tips to anybody watching on uh, any tips that you may have for troops or any of the uh, little lessons that we go over. And I'll definitely be making more videos on this in terms of light vehicles, tanks, maybe how to use special callouts, and explaining things like DPMP and CP so that way people can play multiplayer too. Today's purpose is then a little bit more about just how to generally play, not necessarily multiplayer, but also could be useful in single player too. So just keep that in mind that we will go over multiplayer, we will go over the campaigns, and I got a lot more plans. So based on how successful this series is, we will do much, much more. Now let's jump in to the battlefield. All right, now this would be the beginning of a multiplayer match here in Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostfront. And on the right side of the screen, we see the different panels that allow us to call out all the different types of units that are available in the game. The upper left side having our mini map, which will allow us to see enemy units and friendly units on the battlefield, which we can zoom in and out and uh, make larger or smaller. And some other information that pertains to the multiplayer battle itself. But again, remember, we're here just to take a look at the infantry and to see how they work differently from vehicles, from each other, and also how they can be used with vehicles and each other in order to be more effective. We'll start with uh, how you typically will uh, start any battle with a small uh, group of riflemen. This is uh, quite plentiful too, by the way, in uh, a, a campaign, a mission like that. Grenadiers for the Germans, for example, which would be the same as just regular riflemen for the Soviets. And they'll spawn out right over here and we get to use them right away. When they're flashing like this, this means that uh, they have some level of invincibility, so that way, if artillery's coming in on your spawn position, you can at least get your troops away, and that you're not uh, kind of locked down and, and uh, pushed out of the battle. We can select all these troops by just clicking and dragging like this. There's also a little thing on the left side here, just under the mini-map. When you start calling out units, there'll be more and more of them stacked here, and this is a great way to find out where your squads are. So if you tell one group to go into a village and another to go to the opposite side of the map, this is a great way to focus on them so that way you can command them, such as this. Double click will allow you to reselect these troops, and here they are. So this is part of the German army here. We have uh, troops that have submachine guns, yeah. uh, and also machine guns and rifles, yeah. and sometimes automatic rifles. And, of course, a uh, little prior knowledge of World War II or uh, the weapons that are being used will help you out a little bit in understanding how exactly they should be used in battle. And, of course, time will make you a little better player. And uh, practice will make perfect. Although you'll never be perfect in this game, you'll always be learning something new. Yeah. Well, let's spread these troops out a little bit and we'll take a look at them. And we're not here to go over the entirety of the arsenal of German weaponry from World War II, but more just some basic tactics of how to spread out our troops and uh, kind of learn how to play things, uh, basically, of course. All right, so we've spread out our troops by selecting them individually. We can select them as one large group again by uh, clicking and dragging the whole squad, and then you can see it pops up like this again. And we can command them by uh, giving them orders down below. Like, for example, here we see uh, frag grenades and whatnot. 
So if we wanted one person from the squad to throw a frag grenade, we can click like this, and one person will throw it. If we want another person to do it, we continue to repeat it, and everybody who has a frag grenade will eventually throw their grenades. Once they run out, it'll go to another soldier, for example. And hotkeys for this are also adjustable. So in this case, I've selected F as my hotkey, so we'll call out a few grenades. And as you can see, they'll throw them as fast as I can press F and left click. Pretty cool. There's also anti-tank grenades, and the Germans uh, will throw those just the same, except sometimes they can't throw those as far because it's a much heavier uh, bundle of grenades. And that's exactly what it is, is the German uh, hand grenade, but with extra explosives around it. Much more powerful. Very cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and get these troops into battle then. On the left side, we see the red bar, which is their health, the light blue bar, which is their stamina, and the uh, bar here for building materials, which I've actually just noticed. And that tells us then how much they'll be able to uh, dig in and entrench in the future. But let's not worry about that. Let's worry about getting our troops across the road then. So if we right-click, of course, that's the way to make our troops walk, or rather eh, kind of jog over there. This is not a full sprint. If we double-click, they'll double-time it, and they'll go even faster. So this is their maximum top speed. And, of course, the higher skilled the German unit or Soviet unit, the uh, more they can sprint, the further they can go. And they also have some other things that can help them in battle and, of course, different weaponry and such. Let's go ahead and put our troops up here inside this trench. This will be a good way to uh, learn how to get inside of one of these trenches. So our troops can actually take cover inside of trenches. We can build our own trenches, or we can take cover inside of uh, pretty much any obstacle or barrier behind that and use it for cover or use it for defense. Here, we can go ahead and take each one of these soldiers and place them into the trench if we want to, and uh, we can grab our submachine gunners and put them inside. There's a very important unit, though, that might be the most effective inside here, and that would be our machine gunner back here with a weapon known as the MG-42. The MG-42 is a very fast-firing weapon and very good for yeah, both boy. defense and offense, but we're going to go ahead and try to uh, put them right smack dab in the middle of this defense here. Now, as you can see, as we're right-clicking, the silhouette of the soldier comes up in kind of a, a yellow or tan color, and this will let you see exactly what he'll do if you right-click. So if we wanted this soldier, for example, to face the opposite direction, if we were attacking from the other direction, we would obviously want our soldier to be on this side. But since we're defending this way, we can place him here or, you know, possibly here at the entrances too to cover either the center, the left side, or the right side. And then, of course, we can kind of see that this is a pretty good area to defend. There's a little bridge there, and so that means most of the infantry is going to come this way, uh, more likely than tanks, at least across the river quickly since there is a footpath there. And so that's a great spot to put our machine gunner and our submachine gunner too. We can also do the same here with the... A barrier in the center. This is usually used for mortars to defend them or AT guns or any sort of what's called an emplacement. But we'll just go ahead and right click here to a few, uh, few remaining troops to have them go down. And we don't have to do this individually. We can select a group of troops at the same time and right click like that and they'll take cover in the same format. So now we've successfully set up a defense. Now the enemy, if they attack us, will be less likely to kill our troops quickly. Uh, though we will still take losses over time, though nothing's perfect, especially not in warfare, nor is it fair. Very cool, though. We can see our machine gunner. He's in a good spot. He's got his bipod down like that, which will give him uh, better accuracy, though it doesn't really provide a bonus in the game. It's mostly based on range and uh, frequency of fire. Well, let's go ahead and learn the difference now between motorized and mechanized troops. Mechanized troops, typically, whenever they're called in, sometimes there's a special unit for them doesn't look like this has it, but from what I can understand in previous games is that mechanized troops typically use heavier armored vehicles that have better weapons on them, such as uh, a uh, armored personnel carrier here, which is a uh, half-track, because the back half of the vehicle is a track and the front is used to steer. That's what they call a half-track. has a machine gun on the top and can carry some troops with relatively decent armor, as where motorized troops would have something with a motor, such as this truck here. Now, both of them have a good amount of defense in the front, although the truck is essentially, as you would imagine, just a truck. This allows your troops or uh, supplies or guns to get to the front lines very quickly, as where this one can fight to the front lines as well and then later deploy the troops. And this is really good to 
drop off the troops and then stay in combat with them so they can stay together as with the truck you may leave behind. There are certain units and certain squads that you can call in that sometimes do come in half tracks in previous games, so I wouldn't be surprised if they have it here. It's a great idea too, by the way, if you call out a AT gun, don't worry about these just yet, but just as a tip, uh, these can be commanded just like the infantry. So they, if you double click, they will move and they'll push and pull things around and can be attached to the trucks and vehicles. So it's a great way to transport a gun and troops together and then deploy them up and add them as defense. So if we right click with a vehicle, the vehicle will travel at its typical speed. And another thing to note is that terrain in this game for vehicles does matter. A vehicle that's on the road will arrive a lot earlier than a vehicle that's in the grass or the mud or that's on uh, in a river or whatnot or it's stuck in water. We can tell what kind of terrain it's dealing with too, by the way, by uh, going into our direct control. And we'll do that a lesson a little bit later but as you can see here we're now on a road versus being on a ground and you can see that our vehicle speed will change right now we're going almost 40 kilometers per hour and if we go over to the ground you'll see that the speed drops down to about 20 or so and is a little um, more difficult to control there we go well we're gonna go ahead and go over here back up to the top and see if we can push this gun into position which we'll put next to our troops. So all of our troops, by the way, will have a little uh, indicator above their heads that shows that it's our own troops. There is a button on the right side too, by the way, called Highlight Silhouettes that will easily help you find the enemy. The enemies will be indicated in red. Your troops will be indicated in blue. And any enemy troops will be, uh, friendly troops will be indicated in green. Troops that are on your side, but that are not under your control. Let's go ahead and drop this AT gun then. So as, again, as we click on this chain near a vehicle, that will allow it to be hitched up to the vehicle or detached from the vehicle. And the crews can be transported separately from the vehicle. So if this vehicle was full of infantry, these guys don't have to, have to fit in the back. They can just sit in the back of the gun. With another double click, we can move our uh, emplacement up here. And we can also uh, attack this way as well. We can bring this gun up to the front to shoot at things that normally our troops wouldn't be able to destroy such as that building down there. And we'll just go ahead and leave it here again for demonstration purposes. Vehicles, I believe, can travel faster if you right click. So if we take a look at this half track that we called out earlier, we'll go ahead and try to load this up with troops and then we'll cover that in just a moment. So we'll try another group of grenadiers. And as you see here, there's a arrow pointing down into a box. This is telling them to load up into this vehicle. And there's also options to uh, grab certain equipment and to uh, be equipped to certain things this way as well. So for infantry, if we needed these uh, inf infantry men here to arm on this gun, we could then tell them to do this by right-clicking, and they'll close. jump onto the gun just as much as they would a machine gun or into the truck as a driver or in the truck as a passenger, or in this case, uh, a fighting group in the back here. Now the rear of this vehicle also has a machine gun, so it's likely possible that if, it, if and when it becomes full, Somebody will actually be on the rear machine gun as well to cover the exit from the half track. And that should close automatically, I believe. There you go. All right, well, let's go into battle then. Uh, you can see now that we're moving at zero kilometers per hour. If we click once, the vehicle, because of the terrain, will achieve probably around uh, 10 kilometers or so. Or more. It'll eventually speed up over time. If we double click, it'll speed up even more to its maximum speed, which is higher for vehicles that have tracks. So a tank, for example, or this vehicle will travel about just the same as they would on a road. Pretty close, but not perfect. All right, now when our troops arrive to the front line, we can cover them with the machine gun. If there were enemy troops here, the machine gun would be automatically firing. And while that's firing, the troops can get out the back. And again, there's a machine gun on the back to cover the rear, just in case some enemies happen to be behind us because we advance so quickly. And then we can tell our troops to spread out and uh, cover another position, such as this. Again, those troops all automatically indicated where they can take cover. So with a right click, we can then just take up positions all over. Now this would be deadly for a grenade. If an enemy threw a grenade at our troops, more of them are likely to die than if they spread out. 
So once you get troops into position like that, you can always spread them out later. That'll get them to move much faster and earlier before, let's say, an enemy was coming and we quickly dove in there with all of our troops. And now we can spread everyone out a little bit with different commands such as going prone or kneeling. Now you can do this by clicking over here on the change stance button. The stances for infantrymen are standing, crouching, and prone, which is laying on their belly. And they can move in two of these stances. They can move in the standing position, and they can move in the prone position. But I don't believe they're able to crouch and move forward at the same time. They'll have to stand in order to advance. So keep that in mind that if you want to take on the enemy, you'll either need to be on your belly or standing in order to fire while on the move. There we go. So troops can also hide inside of bushes. As you can see here, laying on the road just gives us a little target reticle. That's pointing exactly where the soldier is going to go. But if we click over here, you can then see the silhouette inside the grass. This gives what's known as concealment rather than cover. We can conceal ourselves in the bushes and wait for an enemy vehicle to drive by and then throw a grenade at it. Or we can also shoot enemy infantry that may come too close. Or we can choose to hold fire and uh, allow them to pass as we perform a recon operation. Now, right side, very important. We're going to go over now the firing controls or the troop commands. So that way you can individually command each troop a little bit better. These commands are also at the bottom of the screen here too. So they sometimes overlap just for ease of use or for frequency of uh, commonly used buttons. All right, so here are the controls for these troops. Right now, most troops come out from being deployed in firing mode, fire at will. This basically allows them, the AI, to shoot at anything that's an enemy, and they'll do so until either the enemy is out of range, is disappeared into the fog of war, or is dead. The other options are to completely hold fire, which you can still fire yourself if you go into direct command, which we'll talk about some other time. Um, <laughs> that's interesting, isn't it? He's firing at almost a 90 degree angle. There we go. Now again, if you watch this far, just remember to watch the very beginning of the video where we instruct and go over a few things about how this is the uh, advanced version of the game that only content creators are getting access to for Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostfront, and that you'll be able to have access soon. You can download the beta and try to play some of those missions, but if you've made it this far and are wondering how you get into multiplayer and such, again, remember this is just a tutorial for infantry and uh, something that can come in the future when multiplayer then is later available. As I was mentioning then, we can uh, tell our troops to uh, hold fire, but we can still fire ourselves. We can also choose to return fire. If the enemy happens to shoot at us or hit us, we can then return fire at the enemy unless we uh, are very useful for like a large tank, for example. If you have a small group of riflemen coming down the road and you don't want your tank to shoot at it, you can always tell them to just return fire or hold fire while other units take care of them. All right, we can also do the same with movement. The AI can take command of moving into other positions by going into move at will or hold position. Hold position means that they won't move unless you give the command, unless there's some sort of a vehicle coming their way. Sometimes they'll move out of the way. And uh, move at will allows the enemy, or rather the infantry or the tank or whatever, to uh, spot a unit or an infantryman and move closer to them in order to fire. We can also adjust our stance this way here with the button on the far right. There you go. Kind of in a cycle. You can also assign hotkeys to this. I like to use spacebar to immediately tell my soldiers to drop. This is extremely important if they're coming under machine gun fire and need to get down immediately. Or if you want them to stop, it's a good idea to tell your troops to stop by just hitting that button and they'll immediately drop as they're running. So as you can see, they can go from cover or concealment here. They can open fire at the enemy. And then they can get up, start moving, and if a machine gun happens to open up on them, they can get down and then continue to move. Very good stuff. The next thing to learn is this menu here uh, known as the attack options. This will give us access to the things we saw before. The anti-personnel grenade, the smoke grenade, and of course this is uh, also just based on troop type. But keep in mind that anybody can grab any of these grenades or any weapons that we may see at the bottom. It can be used by any of the infantry. 
but infantry types come equipped with different types of weaponry. So for example, if you call out a rifle squad, they may have a few anti-tank grenades with them, but their primary focus is uh, infantry combat against other infantrymen. Uh, AT weapons, for example, or AT teams like a Panzer Shrek team, may come with a Panzer Shrek and a Panzer Foss combo or a rifle or whatnot, and so they might have uh, little to no anti-personnel grenades, grenades as they're going to be focused more on taking out enemy tanks. Right, we can also do melee in this game with F7. We can attack any other infantrymen and basically kill them. There's no real knocking out in this game and taking anyone prisoner. It's all about combat and uh, killing the enemy, essentially. All right, let's go ahead and throw that grenade then. We'll go ahead and press F here. <laughs> and we can also throw this grenade. Now you can see the grenade arc for this troop is about 30 meters, give or take. And it looks like uh, that's going to be exactly as far as we can throw this is 29.1 uh, let's say meters from our current position so if there are enemy troops up here behind this um, thing of uh, logs then we can throw it that way and the green dot is exactly where it will land so if we're trying to uh, throw it somewhere it'll show you exactly where it'll drop to uh, but if something's in the way of getting through to that arc you'll see like a little red dot like that kind of hard to see but it's something that you can easily figure out with a few grenade throws all right, well, let's go ahead and try to cook a grenade now. Remember, the concept of cooking a grenade is essentially waiting for it to get so close to a detonation that really you want it to try to explode just above the enemy or right as it hits the ground to cause the maximum amount of damage and to give the enemy the least amount of time to escape from your grenade throw. We'll go ahead and do that now. And we'll go ahead and count to three. You'll be able to see it actually kind of counting. There's a little reticle. <laughs> and our troop is dead. Now, the reason this happens is currently in the game, there is a extra animation for some of these troops throwing grenades, and it's uh, a little lengthy. So uh, we'll try that a few more times just so you can get the, the point of that. And this is also, of course, something that the um, AT rifleman can do as well, or the AT, anybody with an AT grenade. So let's try this one more time. Now this will probably be patched out in the future, but what we're essentially going to try to do here is cook this grenade. Now watch the uh, red circle on the screen, the uh, you know the bullseye there. If we hold this, you can see it kind of depleting. Ah, oh, that worked much better. So sometimes infantry, when the animation plays, they'll have to pull the pin twice. So after they've started to cook the grenade, the pin should have already been removed from it. And if you throw it, sometimes it'll start it again. So the countdown timer's going, but technically the grenade hasn't yet been uh, primed for throwing. So it's an extra animation, so it adds time. Let's try that again for a more perfect grenade throw. Something along those lines if the enemy were back there. Let's try a very perfect ideal grenade throw now. Let's see if we can do it this way. So long as the animation... Oh, it still plays, so it's probably just going to hit. Just exploded above. So we're going to do no cooking now, but it'll take a little practice to get that right. Even I'm thrown off by this extra animation. Wow, even then. Let's try one more time. No cooking. Let's just throw. As you can see, very difficult to land a grenade in this zone and have it explode, particularly when you want it to. So take a little practice throwing grenades in those tutorial missions, and uh, practice will make perfect in these. And this system works a little different than it does in Men of War. As you can see, grenades are more bouncy, and so it might take a little bit of extra time to get it perfected. But typically, it's not as hard as you've seen here uh, so far today. All right, let's go through some of the other options yep. for the soldiers. We have ourselves the options to uh, repair if we need to. And there's some other self-explanatory options here like uh, healing with our troops. And also things like the mine detector we'll have to have equipment for. And that's more advanced, but if you hover over it, it'll kind of tell you exactly what it'll do. Like placing an anti-personnel or tank mine. We can also repair vehicles with our troops by grabbing a repair kit out of a vehicle. So we'll get to that some other time. We can also holster our weapons, though it really isn't used for anything other than looking cool in screenshots or perhaps maybe sometimes in missions uh, you'll need to unholster a weapon very rare but it's possible but you won't really need to do much of that and examine if we wanted to examine something like for example another soldier's inventory we can go ahead and click here 
and examine what they had on them. So the soldier on the left is the currently alive soldier, and the soldier on the right is the one who died from throwing his grenade earlier. So we can see here that he's got everything but his weapon. So if we press V as in Victor, and friendly bodies will be highlighted in yellow, and enemy bodies will be highlighted in red. That helps you to identify corpses. And if we press C as in Charlie, we can see here that it brings up a little grab menu. Kind of hard to see that soldier's gun there, but you can see by his left leg that there's a little gun that we can actually grab. So if we right-click, we can pick that up. And if we pre press X as an X-ray, we can check out what this soldier has on his inventory, and we can either grab all or double-click to individually pick up things that we want. So in this case, let's just take the magazines, the grenades, and maybe a health kit. And we can leave things for other soldiers. This is exactly how you get things out of vehicles. This is also a way to uh, repair and replenish tanks if needed uh, of ammunition. So it's a good thing to, uh, to do as you have a little bit of extra time. The last thing I wanted to cover was very important too for vehicles, but also for infantry. You can just simply press R to make your troops point in any direction that you wanted them to. And that's very helpful for gun emplacements. And also very uh, important if you're trying to get your troops to face a certain way if they're all uh, arriving from different locations. Like, for example, if we ask both of these troops to uh, run to this location, but the enemy will be coming from over here, we can then press R and have them both look this way once they've arrived. And it saves them a little bit of a turn, giving us an edge on the, adva on the enemy if, if we happen to be ambushed. It's an extra thing to think yep. about. The last thing I wanted to cover was digging small foxholes. And of course, on, on these, uh, in this game, all the troops, most of the troops, come equipped with entrenching tools, which we saw in our inventory earlier, which we can look at by pressing I, as in India. And as you can see, all the stuff that we picked up before is here, as well as this, the German shovel. And this allows us to make smaller foxholes in order to fight the enemy. So let's go back up here to our friends. And let's just say we're out of room in order to dig in with everyone, and we've arrived late to the battlefield, and we need to make ourselves a trench. Uh, there is a way to make trenches similar to this, but much smaller. But there's yeah. a way for each individual soldier in order to be uh, dug into the battlefield. If we click on the option at the bottom, which says dig small front, uh, uh, let's see, foxhole under F. I actually don't think it has a hotkey, but we can assign it to a hotkey if we want to. We can do like F1 or F2 uh, or F3, whichever we want any of those, or anything F1 through F12. We can click this little menu down here. We can select it this way and see all the other things that troops can build, or we can just click this button here, and then we can click to build it. Now, if we hold left click, we can point it in any direction that we want, so we can make sure that we're up against the road to watch for enemy movement, and we can shoot at them at any time, and we can place another one here too. Now, if one of these soldiers had multiple shovels on him, we could also then press shift in order to queue up multiple orders so we can have one built and then another. Sometimes it takes multiple shovels because they have somewhat of a durability on it so you can't abuse it and make a massive fortress with, with just one person. But as you can see here, if we hold shift, we can queue orders so we can essentially have this guy run in a square for us. And if we hold shift, he'll just continue to follow our previous points over and over again. There we go. So that's pretty useful if you want a soldier to take a specific path somewhere. If, for example, we needed to get to this truck, but we couldn't go this way. Typically, this guy will try to go this way, of course, out of the trench and stay straight to the truck. But if we hold shift, we can have him go down, around, and to the driver's side of the truck and get inside. So if you hold shift, you can queue those orders together. That's very helpful for vehicles. Not used as much, I think, for infantry, but is definitely something to think about when you're trying to keep your troops to go a certain way but it's a little bit better just for individual soldiers not as easy to use it for a larger group now there's many different special infantry in the game different infantry types and different types of tactics but that's really just the basics for your infantry extra things that you can do soldiers that become wounded will automatically heal if they have a bandage and there's a lull in the action they will uh, get down on one knee and uh, pull out a bandage in order to heal themselves and troops that are uh, fatally wounded or mortally wounded can have a medic try to resuscitate them back to life or at least uh, give them morphine and whatnot to get them back into battle. And then they'll heal themselves afterwards and go back to the battle. But in this case of our previous soldier, the damage was too far 
uh, head, and he was uh, not so lucky. <laughs> Definitely something to think about. Uh, again, for infantry, then, on the right side menu, we have large groups, which, again, with this game's doctrines, may all be a little different, though they all should be somewhat similar. The, ma the names sometimes could be different, or the weapons that they're equipped are different, but the squads are all pretty much the same. Uh, for the Germans and the Soviets within their respective groups. We can also call out individual uh, soldiers, such as the rifleman that we saw there, or another machine gunner, or sniper, or the medic, or additional uh, ammo crates. You'll just have to hover your mouse over it to see exactly what it is. And there's also infantry that comes in the special tab at the very bottom. Here we have a Volks Grenadier Detachment, and also just regular Volks Grenadier. So we can call those in, in addition to our Sturm Grenadiers, or Falsam Jaegers, which are paratroopers, but paratroopers in this game deploy on the edge of the map, and they don't get any sort of uh, special ability that way. So if you were hoping for paratroopers to drop behind enemy lines, you'll just have to think of them arriving somewhere nearby via aircraft and then being brought into the battle on foot. Some vehicles uh, do come with infantry in them. I'm trying to see if there's any now, but I don't think that's the case here. But infantry can ride in pretty much any vehicle that you've called out, so, uh, and also capture enemy vehicles. So some vehicles here might have additional seating that friendly soldiers can sit in. In this case, this is mostly just a uh, vehicle for towing, but the guys can get inside this one, and it is not as armored as that other half-track, but you can use it for transportation and for towing. I believe this is an engineering vehicle that's used to lay barbed wire, as you can see there, but it can tow uh, guns and such along the battlefield, just like the uh, other previous vehicle did. This, I guess, would make this uh, probably a mechanized group as well, but still, the definition doesn't matter. It's just what you can do with it in combination. This is pretty powerful. This vehicle here can, uh, unfortunately, one person is going to have to walk, but the fact that we have mobility and can move across the battlefield quickly, and then if the enemy is spotted, we can immediately detach the gun, have the vehicle swing around to another side, and then have the infantry get out. All while we're trying to set up our gun is pretty effective. So speed will be of the essence. If you master those things, it should be pretty quick, but that's a good little basic tutorial on all things infantry. We'll have to go more into things such as infantry anti-tank, infantry um, formations, and other advanced tactics for infantry. Different types of infantry, like, for example, what the flamethrower and AP miners can do and some of their special abilities, and a few other things like that.